In this Photoshop design tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to do a simple photography logo in Photoshop. So hi guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and you can find me on Facebook at Retail Pro. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to do a simple photography logo in Photoshop. It's very simple, we're going to work with a few fonts and then as well some graphic elements. Yeah, put everything together with a cool background and create a logo. So let's get started guys. Okay, so over in Photoshop, as you guys can see, I've got my text already that's done for the logo and also the background. I don't want to show you guys the complete process of how I created the background. I'm going to go through it quickly, but also not re-replicate this. Let's have a look here quickly. I'm going to turn off everything so you guys can actually see my starting point. So that was the first layer that I took in into Photoshop, just the normal background, some taxis in New York, and then on top of that, I did a curves adjustment layer. You can also find that again under adjustments, and then over here, curves adjustment layers. Now, if I'm gonna double click on this, I'm gonna show you guys quickly what I did. I just took up the highlights, obviously they stick there, then the highlights down a little bit, and also the black points just up a little bit again. Okay, so that was my first curve that I did. Let's also scroll down here a little bit. Then on top of that, I've added a bit of a hue and saturation adjustment layer in order to get a bit of a warmer color cast with this. So let's also enable this so you guys can see here, selective color again, here is selective color adjustment layer. If I'm gonna double click on that, I worked a little bit in the neutral tones. So again, neutrals over here, and then I played a little bit with the cyan, minus 14, magenta, minus two, yellow, plus five, and the blacks, plus three, just in order to get a little bit of that yellow effect here going. Let's have a look, that's the before and after, before and after, just literally a little bit yellow. Then on top of that, I've added a new layer, again, a black layer, filled it up with completely black, so I can have like a little uh, black layer underneath so I can turn down the opacity a little bit. So sometimes I play with this and check what the opacity I will get and then I obviously want to turn it up to 55 so the logo text always stands out a little bit more. But now what I did is again I took this up to 100%, disabled this again, then went back to my last layer over here and said the master shortcut. So I basically said Command, Alt, Shift and E. The same goes for Windows as well. And now I applied a little filter that I call is again, let's go to filter. It's called Red Giant Software from Knoll Light Factory. I also have a tutorial about that. I'll link it down below in the description and in the video here where you can learn how to work a little bit more with this plugin. It's a pretty awesome plugin for creating flares. And what I did is place the flare right here in the end. And then you can also make this a bit stronger, a bit brighter. Um, yeah, just to create like a kind of a sun effect there. Then I said, okay and save that as a complete new layer, as you guys can see here. It's just the opacity set to 52 still. So again, this is 99%. That's why I now created a black layer and then also took this opacity down a little bit, just like so 55% so the black shines through a little bit. So the first few layers here are just there to prepare my background. Then I do a merge all layers and then I have my final color on top with the flare again. And then last stage that I did is again duplicated this layer and just created a slight blur on this with the Gaussian Blur tool. So simply, I'll say on this layer now, I would go to Filter and go to Blur and go to Gaussian Blur and then just give this like a slight two to three pixels blur over here. Just so that the logo stands out a little bit more again. Okay, I'm gonna hit cancel here because I have done that already. So as you guys can see, here is my final layer. Again, as you guys can see, it goes a little bit blurry now. And then on top of that, one last adjustment layer again with curves. I'm gonna switch this on. You can see the blacks go really faded. So just fading that out a bit more. And that was also, again, keeping all the anchor points stick to my line of my curve, but just here at the bottom, the last one, pushing that up a little bit. And you can exaggerate this also a bit more a little bit less, that also looks cool. Yeah, just to fade those black highlights and black deep dark points a little bit more. Great, so that's all for just the background. Let's make a bit more space so we can actually see here. So I saved all of this under one file in the background. It's not too heavy to recreate this. So again, here's my final background. Maybe I'm actually gonna leave this out because it's not that much saturated with the blacks. 
And let's start right away with the text now. And you guys can also have a look down below in the description. I've added this complete finished background file for you in the Dropbox file. So you can download it there and just work right away with that if you don't want to work and create it yourself. But yeah, let's get right away into the text. So first of all, what I did here is again, let's have a look through. I created a rectangular box. I took the name Nikki Holmeyer, and that is today's name of the artist. So basically the photographer. Then as well, also what he's shooting, lifestyle, fashion, and portraits, just like a little slogan. And in the middle of the box, photography and a little camera, obviously, again, just a shape here. You guys can also find more about shapes, again, in the tutorial section. Okay, so let's get right away into this. I'm going to just take the text out. And we're going to start right away with just creating the text. So basically, the name of the artist or photographer. Or if it's your brand name, then you can also go with that. Let's start now typing. Okay, Nikki Hohmeyer, we've got that. I'm also going to make a big space here between the two letters, the fonts actually. And also let's go into select the font. So first of all, that's going to be master of break. So as you guys can see, here is the font selected already. If you're not sure about it, you can also have a look down below in the description. I've added everything for you. So you can also get this font from thefont.com or some other sites if you can't find it. Then let's head over to the size over here. I want to turn this up to around 54 or 44 actually. Let's just select everything. Okay, 44. Yep, that should be good. And then I'm also going to have a look at my tracking box, which is zero at the moment here. Um, if you don't have the tracking box, please go to, let's just accept this quickly. If you don't have this character box over here in the right hand corner, go to window and select character box over here. You have to tick this so you can also see the character box. Great. I'm going to take again the move tool here and just move this somewhere into the center. I'm not really sure where the center is right away. And what I'll do now is go back to window, actually view. I'm going to go to new guide down here and just create a 50% horizontal line. So right there, 50 and percent. Hit OK, as I usually do. So if you're new, also have a look on the channel. I've created, again, a playlist for 101 how to in Photoshop. OK, so this is now 50% of my image, or the canvas, actually. I'm going to go back to view again, new guide again, and do the same for the vertical lines. Also 50%. OK, and we've got it right in the center. Now we can take that font again, and just with the Move tool, I'm also working quite a lot here on my keyboard with a shortcut, so I press V on the keyboard in order to get into the Move tool. So let's move it somewhere over here, and let's continue with the next steps. Okay, back to the Text tool. I'm going to make a nice big selection, and we're going to write Photography. Okay, and that is still in the wrong font, so just select all of it, and we're going to work with the next font, which is called Intro. Let's just sort of find it. Okay, and you guys can also have a look again in the description down below. It's all added for you. Then the size should be around 23, 24. That's around my size now. Maybe I'm going to go for 24, actually. And the tracking, I want to do that at zero as well. Okay, let's have a look. 24 looks a bit big, but it's all right. Then I'm going to place it somewhere over here just in the center for the start. I'm also going to move these text layers in a bit. Okay, that is our going to be our main photography name thing. Let's have a look if I place it over here. Hold Shift on the keyboard, or actually Command, so I can select both of these layers. Okay, and let's move that first one again. I'm going to create a next text layer, and this will be our slogan now, either from the company name or again from the artist, the photographer, or whatever. So he is now shooting lifestyle, so I'm going to start with lifestyle. I'm going to make a hyphen. Uh, he's also shooting fashion, hyphen, and some portraits. Okay, and as you guys can see, we can't see anything. It's just way too big. So again, my font that I always work with, Helvetica Neue, just to have a very thin font. Helvetica Neue, there we go. And the slogan needs to be really, really small, so something around 6.7 or something. Let's try that. Yeah really small. Great, but now I still want to up the tracking a little bit. So what I'll do is go back to the character box, just select all of the text first, and just make this all the way up to 720. Yep, I'm going to type that out, 720. There we go, accept it. And as well, I'm going to take the Move tool and literally just move this a bit over here. 
Great, so we've got now all our text elements in. I still want to create now a little bit of a box and also a bit of a logo in between, so the camera as well. For that, I'm gonna to go to the Nikki Holmeyer font here and the layer, just move that up a little bit higher. And now we're gonna to go to our shape tool library actually over here, uh, rectangular tool, there we go. And also I'm gonna make a little box over here. So without holding shift on the keyboard, so then it's equally expanding again. For uh, Windows, it's exactly the same as for the Mac. So I'm gonna make this a bit bigger. And obviously I'm doing this a bit quicker, so take a bit more time when you guys do this. So it's a bit more controlled. Though. Okay, so as you guys can see, it looks gray with some stupid uh, dots here. I don't want that at all. So let's check the move tool. I'm literally just going to place that a little bit higher so I can actually see if that's in the right position. I'm using again on my keyboard here also the cursors just to go left and right a little bit. You guys are also welcome to create some more helplines if that helps with the guidelines here actually. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of the dots here. As you guys can see, it's still in a shape layer here. I'm gonna go back to the shape library here and simply also going to select here under fill. It should be transparent, so nothing in the background. Then for stroke, I want this to be pure white, so the dots will be pure white now. And you have to obviously choose a stroke option, so that will be the first one again. Okay, so it's just a pure line. So now this is totally up to you if it should be that thick or a little bit smaller. I might, yeah, let's open this and check if we can go for like 2, 2.36. That's actually okay for me. I kind of like that. Maybe a little bit bigger. 297, that's okay. Great, so a little bit smaller. And then I'm just going to, with the cursors, again, move it into the right position. And that's basically it. Now, last step that I still want to do is click right click here on this layer, go to rasterize this layer so I can now erase on this layer. Okay, so now it's like just a normal layer, it's not a smart object anymore. Then I'm gonna go to the marking tool, rectangular marking tool. I'm gonna hold shift on the keyboard. Okay, rather not because then it's equally expanding again. So I'm just gonna make a small selection over here. Okay, my box is a little bit further over on the right side than on the left side. So I'm just gonna move that selection a little bit into the center, hit delete right there, and command D, get out of the selection. Control D for Windows, guys. Okay, so now I still have to place my camera in there. And I actually wanted to create a little camera on my own, but it didn't look too great. So what I did to help myself is either find an icon that you can just download from the web or ask someone to create a little icon for you. I basically found one online that I will show you guys quickly. I've also added that link down below again in the description. And I've just downloaded it here from clicker.com. Clicker.com, yeah. So I've got this icon here. And basically what I'm going to do now is just drag that icon into Photoshop, okay? So right away I have it over here, drag that into Photoshop, and you guys can see it is a bit bigger. So I'm going to use this icon. Please just ask for permission when you guys do this as well. Now, as you guys can see, it's still a smart object. So I'm going to hit right click, rasterize this. I'm going to take the magic wand tool and just select all the black parts from this uh, camera and going to just copy that. So I've selected all, I'm gonna press Command Z now on the keyboard. Windows people, please press Control when I say Command. Okay, Command Z, Command V, duplicate, paste that. I'm gonna delete the first layer, and again, over here we have this layer. Now it's obviously still dark with a little bit of a stroke edges here. I want to completely convert this to a white layer. So I'm gonna right click or double tap actually here onto that layer. You're gonna get into the layer styles. And in layer styles, we're gonna say here, overlay with color, so color overlay. And then I'm gonna click here on white, select a pure white layer, okay, okay, and we have everything purely white. Now you guys can still see the effect here from our layer. You can turn off this little arrow and it will be shortened again. Now last step, Command T to get into the transform mode. Hold Shift on the keyboard and literally just make this a bit smaller and move that again into the center here. So you have a really cool icon there. Okay, accept that and move that into the right position. Great, so that's basically it. Then I'm gonna go to view, clear the guides because they irritate a little bit. I'm also gonna zoom out a little bit just to get a bit of a feeling for the whole logo. And uh, last step again, Nikki Hormeyer, the text. Let's move that a little bit up and right. I just wanna have a look quickly at my before. And yeah, kind of something like this. 
Yeah, this is totally up to you how you place it then at the end, but it's roughly the build how I did it. Again, lifestyle fashion, having a look if that is pretty much the same as the top. So the distance here in between and if my photography and that is all still in the center. Great. So let's, that's basically it. Last step, again, selecting photography, lifestyle fashion, layer 7, which is the camera. You can also rename this. Let's maybe quickly do that. Cam, rectangular, Nikki, and I'm just holding command here on the keyboard, so I'm selecting all these layers. Now I'm going to press command G together so we can create a new group here again, and I'm going to write text 2. And there you guys go. This was our before, and this is the after. So it looks a little bit different, but obviously I did this a bit quicker. So yeah, that's basically it for this tutorial, guys. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to hit me up with a thumbs up there, subscribe, and as well, share it with all your buddies who are new to Photoshop, because Photoshop is for anyone. Thanks again for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next tutorial. Yeah, and if you want to see some more epic tutorials from this channel, then check out here on your left, or again on my left, right, I think, left, right, right, left. There's a ton of tutorials for you. And if you're a beginner, check out the 101 how-to Photoshop playlist on our channel.